And we're back with the answer to today's biz quiz. How many black owned newspapers are in Atlanta? If you said four, you're correct. They include Atlanta Daily World, Atlanta Inquirer, Atlanta Tribune, and the Atlanta Voice. As the civil rights movement took shape across the South, African-American newspapers were there to cover it as only they could. They shined a light on the leaders, covered the boycotts, and were an advocate for the African-American community. Throughout history, the black press has played a critical role in the battle for equality, from the abolition of slavery to the current crusades for social justice. During the civil rights movement, segregation was not just limited to schools, bathrooms, and water fountains. White-owned newspapers like the New York Times and the Washington Post were ill-equipped to cover the plight of African Americans because they had very few people of color in their newsrooms. To provide comprehensive coverage, black journalists stood on the front lines, a risky move but necessary to tell their truth. Their efforts may have gone mostly unnoticed by most Americans, but the black press has left a lasting legacy, amplifying the voices of those who also deserve to be heard. One publication that made its mark during the movement is the Atlanta Voice. Janice Ware is the owner and publisher of the paper. Its mission, to give the people a voice. That voice continues to be heard today, as you'll see in today's executive profile. I've got to say that this is a pleasure for me because I don't get to sit down across from another newspaper publisher very often. So we could just talk about the newspaper business, but I prefer to talk more about the Ware family and everything that, you, that brought you to where you are today because I think it's a great story. It's an interesting story. And it started when I, kind of, I guess, grew up with my parents in Northwest Atlanta. And my father started a newspaper, and he started it in the basement of our home. When we grew up, we didn't know a lot about segregation because we had everything that we needed in our communities at that time. So we were just normal kids, so living what, a normal life. What was the fire that inspired your dad to start a newspaper? My father worked for the Atlanta Daily World when he came out of school. So that was what brought him from Birmingham to Atlanta. Right. After that, he actually started a newspaper prior to the Atlanta Voice, the Atlanta Inquirer. And then he started the Atlanta Voice as a result of, I know you know Zenona Clayton, but his, her husband, Ed Clayton, mm -hmm. wanted my father to be the person that worked with him to do the, the Atlanta Voice. And it was a deathbed request after putting out one issue for my father to continue the publication. So now we're still struggling and we're still out there and it's an interesting phenomenon. What do you think has been the secret to that survival after, uh, after all these years? So we recognized we needed to change. That meant bringing in some younger individuals who have very creative ideas, who do a lot of things with social media and interview people differently than we did before so that we can grab their audience and bring them on while maintaining the audience that we had before. So this mm. whole movement away from print to digital is this something that you see happening with the Atlanta Voice as well, or do you still see the print component being an important part of what you deliver to the community? Right now, the print component actually is our bread and butter. Mm -hmm. So there's no way for us to substitute uh, or decide we will not be printing anymore. You can't, we, we have not figured it out. We either have to get into the event space or really master the digital space so that we can build, you know, build, bring in resources that's going to really sustain us that way. I don't think that's going to happen for a while, but truly I'm concerned about it. What is the game plan for Atlanta Voice going forward? How do you see, again, where all media outlets are, are challenged by how do you grow where the media world is changing so radically? What are your plans for the Atlanta Voice? So we have a wonderful facility in the back of the building that was a garage. My father used to have his own printing press and I don't know if you knew that. So we printed our own newspaper at that point and we create, um, printed creative loafing for a period of time as well. As a result of that, that space is sitting vacant. So we want to create a multimedia center where we can actually have interviews and people to come in into our space and be able to talk to anybody whenever they're available to do it versus having to be outside of that space. So I'm really excited about that. It's just a matter of time for us to complete it and I hope to have it up and running by the end of the year. So beyond the Atlanta Voice, mm -hmm. you also have SUMAC. Yes. Tell me about SUMEC and what it is and, and the role you guys play in terms of the housing community in Atlanta. Okay, so SUMEC Community Development Corporation was started by my late father in 1989 and it was his vision that we would change and reconfigure the mechanics of area of the city of Atlanta. Now, again, when he died, I didn't know anything about real estate development. 
very little about housing. I do have my real estate license, so I understand selling a house and buying a house, but developing a house was something totally different. Um, but over the years, so this has been 30 years now, we have developed over 1,400 housing units independently and in partnership with for-profit developers. That's tremendous. So Mechanicsville does not look like it did when we first started this, you know, this venture. So if that, they could multiply that kind of formula around the city and around the state, and that was the first one in the state of Georgia, we would see more affordable housing. Affordable housing is my passion. I believe that people have to have a decent place to live and they need to be able to afford to be in that community. The challenge for Mechanicsville is that we don't have grocery stores or drug stores or businesses that you can really do well with. But one of the things we did create was a commercial development space. And a gentleman out of the neighborhood said he wanted to open up a restaurant. So it's called 656. And they've been in that space for like four years now. And now they're wanting to buy the building away from the not-for-profit. So we're excited about that. So that's exactly what economic development should be about, trying to allow people who lived in the community to be able to prosper from being in that community. So in 2008, we had a major correction in the housing industry mm -hmm. that was very painful to a lot of folks. Tell me about, from Sumex's perspective, what did you see? Did you actually see this coming? I could see it coming because some of our tenants in our affordable housing units were moving out and moving into homes that they were supposedly going to purchase. And I know if they were late for rent every month, there was no reason and no way that they could be approved for a mortgage at that time. And it was, a, it was devastating to a lot of communities. Our African-American community, community suffered greatly as a result of that. Now, we still have a problem with the re real estate crisis. The values of African-American homes are down like 48 thousand dollars versus properties in four uh, all white neighborhoods mm -hmm. and why is that so you don't have access you don't have the resources all of those things are dividing the city so until we recognize we've got to equal the playing field we're going to still have those same issues in our community the Atlanta Voice is now a multimedia operation online in print and on demand with digital platforms and mobile apps and this year Sumec is celebrating 30 years of building better more affordable communities